Hey guys, I'm Sonika. In today's video, we are gonna do some butterfly photography with my Nikon Cool XP 500 versus my Nikon D5300. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell icon to get notified whenever I'm on YouTube. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Sonika. Welcome to my channel which is all about photography, travel, vlogging, cameras and I put out new photography tutorials every Wednesday for you guys. So if you want new tips and tricks from me every Wednesday, please consider subscribing and in today's video we are going to do some butterfly photography with both my cameras, the Nikon Coolpix P500, a bridge camera and the Nikon D5300, a DSLR. Uh, many of you guys voted for this video on my community tab so now it's time to give that video to you guys so let the comparison begin uh, settings for my b500 uh, i'm gonna keep my settings quite similar to what i use for bird photography uh, i'm gonna use the auto mode and set my iso to the least 125 since i'm gonna be shooting in broad daylight i don't think i need very high iso uh, white balance will be auto, uh, manual focus, and uh, AF mode will be pre focus, and release mode will be continuous high because I want my camera to keep taking images as I keep my shutter release button pressed. Now, with these settings, let's hit the nature park. Capturing uh, butterflies in flight can be difficult with my B500 as it does not allow me shutter speed control. Macro mode, now I'm gonna turn on the macro mode of my B500. I do that by clicking this button below OK and turning the macro mode on. Now I'm gonna turn on the inbuilt flash of my D500. Uh, I usually don't use flash for butterfly photography, uh, but to show you guys, I'm gonna turn it on. But I'm gonna use a diffuser to my flash because I don't wanna scare away my butterflies. So I'm gonna use this piece of white paper and tie it all over my flash with rubber bands. I personally think using a flash for butterfly photography hardly has any effect. That's cause my butterflies are quite far for my flashlight to reach them. Uh, that's all with respect to my Nikon Coolpix B500. Now is the turn for my Nikon D5300, my DSLR. Uh, I'm gonna use aperture priority and set my aperture around f6. Uh, I'm gonna keep my shutter speed around 1 by 500 and for fast moving butterflies or to capture butterflies in flight uh, my shutter speed can be around 1 by 1000 so I'm gonna keep my ISO such that it gives me such a high shutter speed uh, mostly an ISO of 500 is sufficient to give me that shutter speed in broad daylight uh, but if uh, need be I will be increasing my ISO accordingly uh, I can use a white balance as auto, spot metering, uh, I may use matrix metering also if the spot metering does not give me good results. Uh, I will shoot in raw plus JPEG and exposure compensation will be minus 0.7. Now I'm going to use an external flash with my camera. I have this Godox DTL flash that I'm going to use. 
here also using the flash has hardly any effect on my butterfly photos also the flash restricts my shutter speed and overexposes the scene if my butterfly is nearby now that we have our images let's take them into our computer and see what we really got here is my image that I have clicked of the striped tiger butterfly using my Nikon Gold Pix P500 and here is the image of a blue tiger butterfly clicked with my Nikon D5300 and now we are going to edit them I'll start with the B500 image first I'll go to filter camera raw filter first thing I'll do is go to lens correction tab and remove chromatic abrasion then I come back to my basic tab, adjust my temperature, increase tint to give more magenta tint to my image. Exposure here is fine I guess I don't want to play with it. Increase the contrast, reduce highlights by pressing down the alt key. Increase shadows also by pressing down the alt key. My image is exposed well so I don't need to edit it too much. Similarly I will adjust my whites and blacks by pressing down the alt key. Increase clarity, vibrance. I'll take my saturation down a little bit. Curves, I love playing with the curves option because it really enhances your images guys. That's it, I'm quite happy with my image. I'm not going to edit it further, I'll press OK, that's it. I'll give my image a slightly tighter crop. I'll go to the crop tool. Now select my area. press enter and that's it now I'll come to my D5300 image camera raw first thing lens correction enable lens correction remove chromatic abrasion then go to the basic tab increase contrast similarly I will reduce the highlights add shadows Adjust the whites and blacks, pressing down the ALT key. Increase clarity, vibrance, saturation. Again, I'll use the curves option to brighten up my image a bit. Uh, luminance, since this was clicked at uh, 500 ISO I may have to uh, do some noise reduction so luminance of around 15 is fine that's it ok I'm gonna press Ctrl T and rotate my image a bit so that my shrub stands in a straight standing line. I'll give it a vertical crop this time. Enter. That's it. So guys, this was a comparison between my Nikon Coolpix P500 and Nikon D5300 with respect to butterfly photography. Butterflies are super fast guys, so you have to be very patient and persistent if you want to photograph them. And I hope the tips I gave you in this video help you in achieving that purpose. If you did, give me a huge thumbs up. Leave a comment down below about which tutorials you want me to make next on my channel. Share this video with your photography friends and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also turn on the bell icon to be notified whenever I post new videos. 
here is my previous uh, butterfly photography tutorial please go check it out guys thank you so much for watching stay tuned for more such videos every wednesday on my channel bye